do I have? Mu zero epsilon naught partial B with respect to T. Right. Okay? Which means that 10.4, you replace the divergence well, of A with that, and it just becomes. So let's see what happens. The so 10.4, let's read it out. The Laplacian of B. The Laplacian of B, I like where you're going. Minus. Well, plus, we'll go plus the plus. partial with respect to T of minus U naught epsilon naught partial B with respect to T equals minus minus rho free over epsilon over epsilon naught. Play around with this. This is del squared B minus U naught epsilon naught. The second time we the rho B. Look how nice that worked out now. Huh? Imagine you guys are at the point in your career where you're happy to see that. <laughs> That's pretty nice, huh? Yeah, you're happy to see that. We solved that number of times. You're very, yeah, you're pretty happy. Well, look, I'm not exactly static because that's not still, zero, still not but I'm still so, kind of happy. Right? Well, it's, it's, it's easier to solve <laughs> than uh, that other stuff. Yeah, I think so. We at least say we're, we're familiar with it. You know, you're always happier when you're familiar with something. All right, in 10.5, we're left with Just del squared A minus mu naught epsilon naught partial squared A with respect to T squared plus zero, and that equals minus mu naught J free. So let's get rid of that term. And this is the same equation as the top one, just with a different solution. Right. So here's what I like again that you know Griffith said it, and I have a newfound appreciation for it, I guess. Is that what oh is that oh so, so here's how we can do it. When we did electrodynamics in a vacuum, what happened to these two sources? There was zero. There was zero. So we solved the homogeneous wave equation in a vacuum right. and the homogeneous wave equation in the vacuum. Right. And so right now these sources are not zero, so we're doing the full-blown Maxwell's equation with sources right here. Right. All right. Now there's a fancier notation that we can use, right? And that's called the Delabertian. Right? And let's it's called our, or the box. All right, do they say box or box squared? I, I forget. Uh, they use box squared. squared. Okay, box squared. So let's define box squared as the operator, the divergence squared minus mu naught epsilon naught partial squared with respect to t squared. And that's called the Dalimbertian. Okay. And what I like about this too, and where we're really moving is. Do you guys remember in modern when we did uh, special relativity? And what we were really forced in special relativity is to move from three vectors to four vectors, right? And so we just had four, four vector um, space time coordinates and four vector energy momentum coordinates. Well, in three vectors, the Laplacian is just all the second derivatives with respect to, k to space. Right. But if you had like four vectors, Right, the side equation. Yeah, th this would be kind of Laplace's equation. This is Laplace's equation, kind of like operating on four vectors. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, the four vector derivative of uh, particle physics is, um, and so, so look, here's here here's the three vector that equals partial with respect to x, and the i hat or. I'll, I'll do it like a, um, a bet, like a, a column matrix or a row matrix. Partial with respect to y, partial with respect to z. Right. All right. And so we can write that as the partial with respect to um, i, where i, j, k are assumed to sum over three coordinates: x, y, and z. All right. If I use a Greek letter like a nu or a mu, and these are tensor kind of notations, right. then check this out. This is going to be defined as partial with respect to x, partial with respect to y, 
partial with respect to z, comma, 1 over c partial with respect to t. All right, now notice, remember, that um, mu naught epsilon naught equaled 1 over the square root, one over the square root of c. Right. So, or, you know, we're very close. So, um, I'm off by a factor here. 1 over c squared, sorry. Is that 1 over c squared? No. No? No? No, it's 1 over c squared, yeah. It's so c squared because c is no, c is the square root. Yeah. You're not epsilon naught. Yeah, square. but for some reason, in the, the four vector derivative is this. But in any case, you can see we're just extending three vector differential operators into four vector differential operators. And just like, um, you know, the, the, the four vector, so x mu equals x, y, and z, that's a three vector. Uh, sorry, x, i, because it's the i, j, k, a three vectors, whereas x mu equals x, y, z, comma, c, t. Okay? Side note, complete side note. But what we've got here is box squared v equals minus rho free over epsilon naught. And then we have box squared a equals minus j mu zero j free. All right? And this is what we're all about. What is our goal now? To solve what? Solve for? V and A. V and A. Once we get V and once we get A, what might we want to find? E and B. E and B. What is B? Magnetic curl of A. No, B is the curl of A in the magnetic field. And what is E? Minus the derivative of A. All right. What, what have I done about all that whole gauge transformation and all those lambdas and everything? What am I doing now about those things? Don't care. Don't care. <laughs> They're gone. Just steps. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're the reasons why we can do this. How about that? So here we are. This and then B equals the curl of A. E equals minus grad B minus the partial like of the X D T. And essentially, what have I done right here? Those little tiny equations now have reduced all of our original Maxwell equations. Maxwell's equations, fully dynamic, with sources, with charges, with currents, down to this. Maybe that on the phone. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, detail. Put it in my background. Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, look, this includes all of electrostatics, right? Coulomb's law, law of Biot-Savar. It includes all of uh, self-propagating electromagnetic waves when these are zero, right? And it's going to include every other case. Essentially, the, these are the solutions to all electricity and magnetism. Okay, pretty cool. All right. All right, so I'm going to quit for today, but here are a couple of homeworks that you might want to try on the way, okay? So I think I would like you to try to do problems 10.3 and 10.5. Because what that does is that plays around with some gauges. It gives you a potential, and you have to calculate an E and a B, and then it adds on, like some of the of lambda, and you have to calculate like an E and a B again, all right, and see if it doesn't change. All right, so 10.3, 10.5, and then, um, yeah, and then, yeah, I mean, that, those are doable ones, and so we'll just do that. Try to have that for um, on Monday, okay? And then what I'll do is um, I'll ask you guys, because I've lost track a little bit about the homeworks that I've asked you guys, so what I'll do is try to get that and then try to get everybody up to speed, and then what we should do is talk about a midterm.